For the first time since winning the leadership, Jagmeet Singh is officially a member of the House of Commons. He won a by-election in Burnaby South last night. There's so many people out there that count on us. They need us. And so I know people have worked really hard over these past couple of weeks. I know it's been a long slog, but I hope you've got more left in the tank. Yeah. I hope you do. Also in politics this week, former Justice Minister Jody Wilson-Raybould will finally be allowed to speak on the SNC-Lavalin affair after the federal government waived some of the solicitor-client privilege. For all that and more, we are joined by the Globe and Mail's Laura Stone. It was hard to decide where to choose first, but let's start with what happened last night. We will now get a chance to see Jagmeet Singh in action in the House of Commons. A crucial win for him, a crucial win for the party. What does he need to do now? Well, what Jagmeet Singh needs to do is finally make his mark on this party. I mean, he's been... He's been trying to control the NDP from afar, and no one, the Canadians don't really know where he stands on the issues. He hasn't gone toe to toe with Justin Trudeau or Andrew Scheer in the House of Commons. So that's the first thing that he needs to do. I mean, he's had some issues with caucus management. He hasn't really looked like a leader. He hasn't seemed like he's grasped the issues of his party. I mean, sometimes he's standing at press conferences asking his MPs where the party stands on a particular point. So he, so the, the, the public needs to see what a Jugmeet Singh NDP finally looks like, and now he has the chance. Uh, an upset for the party, however, so he won in Burnaby South, but there was an upset for the party uh, in the Montreal riding of Outremont. This is the one that Tom Mulcair held. It was lost to the Liberals yesterday. Uh, do you think the SNC-Lavalin scandal played a part in that? I don't think it. I don't think it did. I don't think it resonated at that point um, in the by-election. I mean, this was a symbolic writing, of course, for the NDP because it is former leader Tom Mulcair's writing. But it's actually traditionally a liberal seat. Um, you know, so of course the NDP would have liked to win it. They don't. They don't want to lose writings, especially in Quebec, and we know that that's where um, the NDP could lose many seats in, in the upcoming election. I mean, they've got more than a dozen seats right now. Jagmeet Singh's pretty much an unknown entity in Quebec, so that doesn't bode well that, that, their, that their numbers fell about 15 points from where uh, Tom Mulcair stood. Um, but I think, you know, by-elections, it's, it's not traditionally the same as, as a general election, so I don't think the SNC-Lavalin scandal hit there just yet. Uh, it is good timing, though, for Jagmeet Singh to come in and to hit the floor. I remember him at Queen's Park. He was very strong when he is in the room and going toe-to-toe -to -toe on these issues. Uh, this is good timing for him and for the NDP. Absolutely. He's a charismatic individual. We've already seen him, uh, you know, taking on the Liberals over their corporate interests and with this SNC-Lavalin issue ongoing. This is, this is very fortuitous timing for Jagmeet Singh saying, to come in and say, I'm going to stand up for the little guy. Yeah, so speaking of SNC-Lavalin, we know that the Prime Minister has listed most of the constraints, we're not quite sure what that means, over the sol solicitor-client privilege for Wilson-Raybould. She has not only said she wants to tell her side of the story, but she's also requested this extra 30 minutes to speak ahead of time. What can she and can she not say? Well, she can say a lot. Um, you know, Jody Wilson-Raybould is able to speak uh, to her conversations on the SNC-Lavalin matter with individuals in government, and that uh, should mean that, um, some of, of Prime Minister Trudeau's top advisors, such as Gerald Butts, who actually has resigned, um, and Katie Telford as chief of staff. She's not allowed to talk about her discussions with the public prosecutor, um, but she can, she can say a lot. She's going to be able to share much of her story, which she said she's anxious to do. The Conservatives also introduced a motion calling on Trudeau to take questions from the House Justice Committee for two hours, no later than March 15th. It did not pass. What is next for the opposition? <laughs> well, you know, that's not unexpected. I mean, I don't think we would have seen the Liberal Party voting for their leader to be grilled in a committee for two hours. But, you know, this Jody wilson Rabel testimony is, going, testimony is going to be very interesting. Um, you know, we're going to have to see, you know, if, if she did feel pressure to change this decision, why did she feel it was inappropriate pressure? She, is she going to name names? Mm -hmm. Who did actually ask her to do this? Mm -hmm. And why didn't she resign? Why is she still a member of the Liberal Party? I keep feeling it's not a parallel by any means, but I remember, you know, watching the Duffy scandal and the issues around Nigel Wright. What did the Prime Minister himself know and what did the people around him know becomes very important. Exactly. It's a real window into, into the inner workings of the Prime Minister's office. Was it the Prime Minister himself who, who directed Jody Wilson-Raybould or was it his staff? And, and the power of these unelected staffers is really the key issue. All right. Always good to talk to you, Laura, and lots to drill into this week. Good to Thank have you, you here.